you have never heard his voice. It's unlikely that you ever will. No existing recording of Mark Twain's voice is known. Although he experimented with recording dictation on wax cylinders, he soon grew dissatisfied with the process and he abandoned it. The wax cylinders are thought to have been destroyed or recycled. A singular recording considered the best likeness of Twain's voice is of the acclaimed actor William Gillette. As a boy, Gillette was a close neighbor and frequent visitor to the Twain household. Twain loaned him $5,000 to begin his acting career and placed him in one of Twain's plays. Gillette became to the American theater what Twain became to American literature, the leading proponent of naturalism. After a long and stellar career, Gillette was recorded in 1934 when he spoke to students at Harvard University. Here is what he said. When I was young, I traveled around the small towns of New England giving imitations of actors and celebrated people, and among them was an imitation of Mark Twain. I lived next to him all my early life. The celebrated story of Mark Twain's, the one that first, I believe, made him famous, was called the Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. Well, there was a man around here in the spring of 49 uh, named Jim Smiley, and he was the most uh, worst man you ever saw about betting on anything. That is, if you could get somebody to bet on the other side, and if he couldn't, he'd change sides. Anything <laughs> what suited the other man would suit him, just so he got a bet, he was satisfied. And he was lucky to uncommon lucky. There couldn't be no solitary thing mentioned for that fellow to bet on. If there was a dog fight, he'd bet on it. If there was a cat fight, he'd bet on it. Why, if he'd seen two birds a setting on the fence, he'd bet you which one would, would fly first. If he even saw a straddle bug start to go anywhere, he'd bet on where he was going, and he'd follow that straddle bug from Mexico before he found out where he was going and how long he was on the voyage. <laughs> Parson, old Parson Walker's wife laid very ill once and for a long time. It looked like they weren't going to shave her. But one day, the parson come in kind of lively-like, and one of the boys said, well, how's the wife, parson? And he said, well, she's considerable better, thanks the Lord, for his infinite mercy. And with the help of Providence, she did well yet. Well, I bet you two to one she don't anyhow, says <laughs> smiling before he thought a word about it.